What is going on, YouTube? Lamont at large. Today, we are coming to you from Louisville, Kentucky. And I was live streaming at the Cave Hill Cemetery, which is right next door to this cemetery, which is called the Eastern Cemetery. And I was doing a live stream and a woman came to my rescue because I was very parched, almost dying of thirst by the name of Miss Ortega. So Miss Ortega, if you are out there, thank you for the water and thank you for telling me about this cemetery. I didn't know about it. So I thought I'd come over here and show you guys the cemetery and talk about the history of it a little bit and why I'm here. So as you can see, just by looking around this cemetery, it's kept in an okay condition. Uh, you see some of the grass is a little bit overgrown. Uh, if you look over here, you see quite a bit of growth right over here. So let's talk a little bit about why I'm here. So apparently this cemetery was founded I want to say in the early 1840s, maybe 1843 to be exact. And this cemetery was opened up just around the same time as Cave Hill, which is right next door. Now, this cemetery would basically be for people who maybe they didn't have as much money as their next door neighbor. I'm not saying that poor people would be buried here and rich people would be buried there. But uh, Eastern Cemetery, part of it was for poor people. They would have a section for, you know, a pauper's graves, if you will. And back in those times, the city would only pay the cemetery $3 per body to bury. So if you're only getting paid $3, <laughs> then you're probably not going to put much effort into burying uh you know, people that were considered uh, destitute, uh, indigent, indigent, excuse me, what have you. So over the course of all those years, I mean, there's records in this cemetery going back to just in 1858 where they would bury somebody in a, in a grave, right? And then they would bury another person on top of that person so in this cemetery you have about 16 graves 16,000 graves but you have a, a, on record an estimated 138,000 burials so there's a problem here right 16,000 graves yet 138,000 burials so what they would do since so they're only getting paid three dollars is let's say you were buried right here. Well, they would bury you, which was accustomed to, to six feet deep, and then they would go to the same grave and put another body on top of you. And it was getting to the point where, let's say for instance, if there was like a breakout of uh, cholera or, or yellow fever or whatever, and a lot of people died, they would get three or four bodies and bury them in a grave, and hey, you're not getting paid very much, so they're not digging that grave very deep. So literally, you would have a grave with three or four bodies in it, and there's only six inches of dirt on top. So you have that back in the 1800s, going into the early part of the, uh, you know, 19th, uh, excuse me, 20th century, and you would have animals like wild hogs and, and all kinds of uh, varmints coming around, digging up the graves, eating the bodies, and then whatever the bones would just be scattered across this whole cemetery. And this cemetery was in very, very, very bad shape for many, many years. And that was the common practice. And they just kept doing it. And it was, it was kind of known through all the workers. You know, you're working here back in the 50s. And they would just, let's say, for instance, there was a grave right there, right? 1951. And they sell that grave to somebody else. Guess what they're going to do? They're going to dig you up. And, and they, just, they would just take your bones and either bury it along with the person who's being buried, they would just sometimes even throw the bones in the coffin or they'd just throw the bones in the trash. And they did that for many, many years. And then 
1989, there was a whistleblower lawsuit that was filed and whoever was in charge or owned the cemetery, uh, it was basically taken away from them. And they were charged with amongst uh, a couple of uh, things, uh, reuse of a grave, that is illegal, cannot do that, and abuse of a corpse. And some of those people and the workers were hauled off to jail. And then basically the ownership of the cemetery was taken away. But then now the city was running the cemetery. So I don't, I don't know if there was new burials allowed after 1989 or 1990, but I mean, it just fell in disarray. So that's why if you ever come to Louisville and you see Cave Hill, which is on, that, on the other side of that brick wall with the razor wire on top, you're gonna see this cemetery, which is, you know, it, this, it looked a lot worse before. Now you got some, like an organization that's called Friends of Eastland Cemetery. They come here on the weekends uh, during the, you know, the months where the weather is not cold. They come in the spring, the fall, in the summer, and they do, uh, they mow the grass. Uh, they just they try to fix some of the graves. Uh, they basically, this is a volunteer effort. They come out here and just, they try to do the best that they can. And considering they're volunteers and nobody's getting paid, this cemetery looks pretty good. I mean, you can only expect so much, you know, so many people to do so much when, you know, nobody's getting paid and they're, you know, coming out here with their own uh, tools uh, and sometimes. But uh, you can imagine, so right, 138 burials, 138,000 burials here, and you don't see that many. So that means that basically every square inch of this cemetery must have some kind of human remains in there. So I thought I would just show you this cemetery really quickly and just kind of talk about uh, uh, what would happen. And yeah, this was... Uh, in, the, in 1989, this was all over the news here in Louisville. And, you know, kind of kind of sad. I mean, this isn't, you know, I didn't want to make it seem like this was a, any kind of a pauper cemetery. I mean, you no, know, people, you know, people that had money, I'm sure they were buried here as well. But they just had a, I uh, guess they had a contract with the county or the city where they would bring, you know, the poor people that couldn't afford a burial and then they just kept doing it and then they and then they would go from that they would go to people you know looking to have their loved ones buried buried here maybe they were cheaper than cave hill because you know cave hill is very expensive you know that cemetery right there uh you got uh a famous magician his name escapes me right now he's buried there uh you got uh the colonel sanders uh the guy that came up with kfc muhammad ali he's buried at that cemetery and, you know, this cemetery, I don't know if anybody uh, is uh, buried here that is famous or uh, was famous. But uh, for the most part, uh, when I read about this online, I was expecting this place to be a total disaster. And it is not. It is, it is for the most part, uh, they're, they're doing, they, they've done a pretty good job of it, if I do say so myself. And, uh, you know, this person right here, whoever is buried right here. You know, they had to have some money to get this built. So this is uh, quite an exquisite uh, crypt. And uh, if you look inside, uh, which it is, it is locked. It looks just to be, oh, there's nobody in here. There's just supplies. Oh. And then there is some grave markers, though, in the back. Jo Joseph Stark's Kentucky Private U.S. Army World War I. Okay, so I, I wonder what happened here. Huh. Interesting. So they just use it as kind of like a storage shed. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I don't see any newer uh, graves here. Not saying they wouldn't allow new burials. I don't know. But for the most part, this place is, uh, I just see mainly nothing but uh, old markers. And, you know, you can imagine at that time that they were buried, when they were burying three people to a grave, and they were just barely putting a couple inches of dirt over them, 
You can imagine all their bones were probably just taken from animals and just scattered all over the place. Yeah, you, you would have to, you'd have to think there's probably not much left if they're not even burying the bodies that deep. But just me uh, going from all the cemeteries that I've been to, this is definitely not the one with the worst shape that I've ever seen. I mean, I've seen some pretty, I've seen some pretty bad ones in Louisiana. Uh, but, uh, you know, this one, you know, I, I don't really know if they could, I don't know if they would be allowed to have uh, any new burials. That's kind of what I'm looking for right now. I'm looking for something uh, like a newer, like a newer gravestone. Something like after 1989. I see that that one's just about 1989. That, would, of course, would have been the year that uh, they were, uh, when that lawsuit came about the conditions in this cemetery. And just like I was talking about that other story about that funeral home uh, up in Jeffersonville, which is about 10 minutes away, you know, you got to do your due diligence in researching uh, cemeteries, funeral homes, always. You know, go look online. I don't know if if you, you know going on Yelp or some kind of uh, review uh, website is you know any indicator on whether or not a cemetery is uh, you know going to be you know taking care of your loved ones prop properly and maintaining the cemetery for years to come. But uh, you know, as you can see right here, the workers are going to have to come and. Uh, take care of this section they probably just do a section at a time and i wanted to walk back here because i was looking because that looked like the newest so this one is still uh kept well together and they still come and put flowers uh and these uh looks like a married couple and they both passed one in 77 one in 79 so this is actually one of the few graves i've seen out here that there's still uh still flowers and you got that one right there, another couple. They died, one in 1980, one in 1984. So I don't see any uh, newer burials out here. And I don't see many flowers. I mean, some some people are lucky enough, like, you know, to be still remembered. And then you got, you know, this this uh, stone is, looks newer, 1980, 1988 death dates. They're still in uh, surprisingly good condition. But uh, as you can see, I hope I hope the video looks good on your guys' end. As you can see, I mean, this, is, uh, this section actually looks uh, not too bad. So, yeah, don't come over here. Don't fix this up. Don't make this look nice. And uh, this section of the cemetery actually looks very nice. So, interesting. Yeah, honestly, to tell you the truth, I, I know, I know, I'm kind of rambling now, so you know, turn me off, whatever. What is this, a podcast? But to me, in a weird way, I, I like cemeteries like this because it just, I don't know, it has character. I mean, I, I'm not saying that I want uh, cemeteries to not be taken care of, and uh, you know, all these kinds of, uh, you know. Um, uh, just uh bad things happening to these cemeteries and all of this uh shocking uh stories you know i'm not saying i want a cemetery where you know deplorable conditions and what have you but um you know oftentimes slick george wesley williams i wonder what happened to him Died very young, and, uh, you know, he died right after he turned 18. I wonder what happened. If I don't find out what happened to him, leave a comment below and uh, let me know. Maybe one of you guys out there watching this video, maybe that'll be your relative. Not everybody's story, story is readily available online. Sometimes you really got to hunt and dig, and you just sometimes you just don't find it. You don't find the reason as to why somebody died, especially somebody as young as uh, as that uh, kid was. That's why I'm always, you know, thankful that I'm, you know, in somewhat healthy shape, a little overweight, quite a bit overweight, but uh, you know, 
try to, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate I've been in some uh, sticky situations, let's just say that. And I'm glad that uh, I made it through and I'm glad that you guys, wherever you are watching, uh, have as well. So definitely, yeah, I can say that I was totally expecting something more, um, I guess, depressing. And, uh, but as I was saying about uh, the character of a cemetery, oftentimes, you know, you, you have cemeteries like, you know, Cave Hill is a very, very nice cemetery. Uh, it's, it's kept very, very well. It's manicured and, you know, I believe they have like on any given day, uh, they, I don't remember the exact number, but I, I want to say it was well over a dozen uh, landscapers taking care of that place. And uh, rightfully so, it's a very nice cemetery. But even though, you know, you see sometimes these kind of sad cemeteries, you know, and you see the overgrown grass, you see kind of like the forgotten graves. I don't know, it just, it, it has kind of a character and appeal that I, uh, that I kind of gravitate towards. And, you know, you'll see a lot of different styles of, no, you don't, you don't see too many different styles of cemeteries. That's why I always appreciate whenever I go, say for, instance if i go out to new mexico you'll have like kind of like the desert landscape uh cemeteries uh, you'll see those in uh, arizona you'll see those in uh, southern nevada and uh new mexico west texas and stuff like that i could probably just keep talking on and on i don't know who who is still watching this video i'm just yammering i'm just yammering like a like a school girl, school girl on his first her first day at school just just yammering away and I'm just, you know, just wanting to, like, look at all these markers. And, you know, I find it interesting that of all this, this sea of green and gray and, uh, you know, these colors, you see, like, occasional pockets of stuff just like this. Just, you know, people still coming to visit their loved one. Emmett Moore. I see Emmett Moore still gets gets visited so this looks like a cemetery where if you have your loved one there you probably are the one that maintains the little area that they're at and you got uh wanda lark porter she died when she was young she was uh 34 years of age american flag i wonder if she was in the military i've actually those solar lights i've actually bought a bunch of them and I carry them with me, and uh, occasionally I try to put one in every single cemetery that I go to, just kind of put it out of the way, uh, you know, so the so it doesn't bother the people when they're mowing the uh, lawns or whatever. But um, yeah, Louisville Louisville is a funny city to me. It's it's a, the, I'll just say this: it's a lot more that goes on than uh, than what you think. And uh, I remember uh, when I first started on YouTube, Louisville was one of the first cities that I had a video that got, you know, that got pretty popular. Uh, it was me just talking about UFO stuff. And I was at the, uh, I was at the uh, stadium where the Cardinals play. So anyways, yeah, just not, not, not a bad, not a bad uh, looking cemetery. I'm, I'm pretty sure, you know, cause it's the 4th of July and the, uh, and people that uh, donate their time, they'll probably get to this area. And, you know, you probably have one week where they concentrate on this area, another uh, week where they concentrate on that area. So they're doing a, a, a fairly good job uh, of maintaining this cemetery, most definitely. So we did a quick walk around and, you know, not, not as bad. I, I imagine they've done uh, enormous, uh, enormous, uh, an enormous job in, in cleaning this place up. And like I was saying, I don't know, I don't know if this place could ever uh, accept new internments, but um, I mean, I imagine you would be able to build some kind of a mausoleum. I mean, if you can get a loan and put a mausoleum on the grounds, you know, you can probably, there is some room, there is a, there is a building over there I don't know if I should go over there and go show you that building. I mean, is anybody even still watching this video? Because now I'm just like, blah, blah, blah. Let's go really quickly. I'm going to go over there. Let's go see what that building is. 
I was thinking this was a mausoleum, but as I am getting closer, I'm gonna guess this was the old uh, crematory because you can see that uh, smokestack right up top over yonder. And looks like this is a rather old uh, dumpster bin. Got a little bit of artwork right there. And got some burials over here as well. Shirley Ann, wife of Martin A. Crawford. Yeah, you're gonna hear some fireworks in the background. It is the uh, 4th of July. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like this is where they would uh, cremate the remains. Looks like it's been, I uh, guess it was bricked up quite some time ago. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, this could have been like a, you know, they would have a crematory in the back right there. And then this could have also possibly been maybe a chapel of some sort where, you know, maybe they had services. But uh, I'm going to imagine that there's probably somebody living back here. So, as you can see, you got beer cans and stuff. And that gentleman that I seen walking near next to me earlier, I'm gonna suspect that he is a resident of this cemetery. Now, listen, I know this video is getting long, long in the tooth. I think that's the uh, saying. But if you're gonna live in this cemetery, you know, if you're gonna live here, at least you should be taking care of it and not leaving a bunch of trash like that because yeah, that's not that's not good there, there should be no trash like that they should have came here and and got some of that out of here anyways okay guys i think i've talked long enough it's 94 degrees out here i am parched and i am going to be hitting the road i'm going north where north I'm going, who knows? I guess you'll just have to hit that notification bell and subscribe. That'll let you know when I upload a video. Don't forget about my other channel, Fascinating Graveyard. On that one, I do more uh, shorter videos or famous graves. And don't forget about Lamont on the Run. I'll put the link to both channels in the description box below if you care to check them out. Lamont on the Run. More of a, uh, still figuring out that channel, um, doing some interviews with homeless people, just kind of showing you quick crime scenes. I'm talking about stuff that might be two or three minutes that I don't think, or I don't feel is long enough to put on Lamont at large. Uh, you might have me talk about my opinion when it comes to a particular matter. Uh, that, that channel, I, I, would always I will always try to have it a location-based channel, but it's more of a variety channel if anything so yeah i'll put it in the description i'm trying not to step on any graves as i'm exiting the cemetery and you can see some graves right here i've been toppled over i've been overgrown but uh like i like i've been saying these guys are doing the best the best that they can so okay guys i'm out of here robert cooper robert cooper okay guys I'll catch up with y'all later. Uh, hopefully I didn't talk your ear off too much, but um, yeah, just wanted to show you the cemetery. Talk a little bit about it. Okay, I am out of here. I will see you on the next vlog. Have a good one, guys. Peace out.